It's Morphin Time. Ready? Go, movie reviewer. Wait. What just happened? Oh, God. Not again! What is up, everybody? Random Random Man here, bringing you my review for the 2017 version of Power Rangers. Now the plot is, of course, based on the property of the same name, Saban's Power Rangers, as it follows five high school students, played by Dr. Montgomery, RJ Kyler, Naomi Scott, Ludie Lin, and Becky G, as they are all recruited by Zordon, played by Brian Cranston, for them to come together and form a team to stop an alien threat led by the riotous Rita Repulsa, played by Elizabeth Banks. Going into this movie, I honestly did not know what to expect. Concerning my history with Power Rangers, I'm not that big of a fan of the property in retrospect. The incarnations of the series that I do remember uh, watching are stuff like Wild Force, Ninja Storm, and Dino Thunder, and I guess I remember liking them um, fine enough. And with this new version of the property being adapted onto the big screen, I did go into it with an open mind considering that I'm not necessarily the target audience this film is intended for, but since we're getting a lot of big screen reboots of other famous shows from way back when, like with Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, what have you, I decided to go in to see what this new version would offer. What I can say about the five main performances of the actors playing the Power Rangers themselves, I was surprised at how pretty good their performances actually were. Dr. Montgomery plays the leader of the group, the Red Ranger. I felt that we got a lot of backstory with him and getting us to know how he is a troublemaker. RJ Kyler as the Blue Ranger, he was easily my favorite of the bunch. His character has an autistic personality with him that made me really attached to him as well. I also just f straight up love this actor. Kyler really impressed me in 2015's Me and Earl and the Dying Girls. Naomi Scott as the Pink Ranger. She is like with Montgomery and Kyler. She is the only other ranger that I felt we get enough to know from her early on. We also get a backstory with uh, Ludi Lin as the Black Ranger and Becky G as the Yellow Ranger, but those two aren't nearly as developed enough as the other three Rangers, but I feel that they all do find jobs with what they get to do. Also, as a side note, Becky G's Yellow Ranger is apparently supposed to be a part of the LGBTQ plus community and I don't know why that was necessarily revealed because it is not played up that much. Only one instance is kind of glossed over. I don't care if these characters are gay, I just care if that they're really portrayed. And Becky G, along with the other actors in this film, do really nice jobs. With the other supporting cast, I really like Brian Cranston as Zordon. He has actually done some voice work for Power Rangers in the past, so it's nice to see him come back here. Bill Hader plays the little robot Alpha 5. He could have come off as straight up annoying, but I felt that he worked for what the film had to offer. With the writing, not only was I surprised how well portrayed the characters were realized with the performances, I was also surprised in how well characterized they were on paper and translating onto the big screen. All five of the Rangers are flawed characters. In adding to that, I also really appreciated that we got a huge chunk of time dedicated to us getting to know these characters, not just to identify with them. I was so enjoying the movie, easing us into having these characters become the Power Rangers not too fast or not too slowly as it ran at a nice pace until, ironically enough, the characters became the Power Rangers themselves, which leads into my issues with the film. We don't see these characters become the Power Rangers or actually morph into the suits until the last quarter or last half hour of this movie. This film runs at about two hours, which I felt was a bit lengthy for this kind of film, especially when the final action sequence really got monotonous and felt rushed to me. The visuals to me were here and there oftentimes. At some moments they looked really good and at other times they looked downright awful. But when it did get to the final showdown between the Rangers and Rita Repulsa, it felt in and out of where we see some scenes shot really nicely but also way too up close or way too fast. 
Speaking of Rita Repulsa, uh, yeah, um, I really like Elizabeth Banks. I really do. But her as Rita Repulsa in this movie, she was awful. She was not good. I felt she was in a completely different movie. And she is just laughing it up, hamming up the screen, uh, going really, really over the top. She does look good, in my opinion, but I don't think she serviced the rest of the movie well. That's also the thing, too, with Banks being over the top in contrast to how kind of self-serious and more grounded the rest of the Rangers' screen time is as there's a clash between the tones of this movie. Sometimes it had a tendency of being too campy or too serious. It went back and forth with one another. The movie still had some sense of focus in the end. Dean Israelite directed this movie and I think he did a mostly competent job overall. Fun fact, he's actually the cousin of fellow director Jonathan Liebsman who directed the 2014 reboot of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And to me, on that note, overall, how I feel about this reboot of the Power Rangers, I honestly enjoyed more than the likes of both live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles films or the live action Transformers sequels that we've gotten because of how we dealt with the plotting and the characters being brought up from the beginning all the way towards the end, even if I felt that the final act of this movie was really messy. Sure, I'm not going to think much of this film later down the line, but it also makes me wonder what the fans of this property are going to think. I'm not sure how they're going to take this new approach to this uh, series, given how it's quite a contrast to how the original series was set up. But as a movie itself, I felt like it is something that is standard, but not by any means terrible, nor anything that I'm going to necessarily be upholding as among the best of the recent adaptations or reboots of classic properties that we know and love. So on that, I do give this movie a cautious recommendation. My final verdict for Power Rangers is... Three out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Power Rangers, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.